confusing. If only there was an easier way. There is. Let me ease your entry into the world of economics. Hi, can I have Hi, you some? welcome to the Widget Factory, where your demand is our supply. Can I just... How can I help you today? Can I purchase a widget? Okay, let me check. I don't have any on hand right now, but I will check in the back. Oh. Sorry, we don't really have any right now. Aw, oh, shucks. I would pay big bucks for a widget. <laughs> the demand for my widget is so high. I need to hire more workers to keep up with it. You, you're hired. We need more workers, so I'll pay you $5 an hour. This is so convenient. With the first, with I have a worker now, so instead of producing one widget per hour, I can produce three widgets per hour. You're hired. I'll pay you five dollar five dollars an hour. With the addition of the second worker, I can now produce five widgets an hour. Without realizing it, John continues hiring workers until he has too many workers who distract the other workers. This is called the Law of Diminishing Marginal Returns. Welcome to the land of perfect competition. It's a weird place here. I love zero economic profit. I love allocative efficiency, which is for everyone who is willing to pay for them. It's not all the same. It's not my game. Now that the companies are producing different products, consumers have a choice in what they can buy. However, monopolistic competition faces a downward sloping demand curve like that of a monopoly, and therefore loses the allocative and productive efficiency of the perfectly competitive market. As the graph shows, dead weight loss has been created at the cost of choice for consumers. In, the, in this graph, consumer surplus is the difference between demand and price. And producer surplus is the difference between the price and the ATC. Despite general satisfaction with the perfectly competitive market, consumers long for differentiated products, and producers discovered that if they differentiated the products, they would be able to charge higher prices. I'm tired of this banana flavored candy. It's time for a change. These widgets have gotten more expensive. I'm not sure if I'm willing to pay for them at this price. Well, I don't care if they pay more. I want the best, and the best is great. A terrible thing has happened in the land of oligopolia today. Disaster has struck the dust industry, causing rents to skyrocket. As a result, this creates a barrier to entry that discourages new firms from entering the industry, and even causes existing firms to exit the industry. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> what we have here is called a duopoly, with two firms dominating the industry. Each firm has some market power, so this causes it to have a downward sloping demand curve. But wait, without the competition of many firms, how will we determine the price of the industry? Well, in this situation, a unique phenomenon called price leadership occurs where one firm sets the price for the industry informally and the other firm follows suit. In our duop, there are two places for Helena and Lily to sell their widgets. Ms. Bergman's room 
what Mr. Pai goes through. Alright, so as you Let can see... Let me take this one, Bumpkin. So the amount of money that each firm can make is represented by this table here. So you see that Lily and Helena both have a dominant strategy, which means that regardless of what the other person chooses, there's one strategy that will give them a larger profit. Can you guys figure out what yours are? Well, regardless of whether Lily decides to set up shop in Pykel's room or Bergman's room, I always will make more money in Pykel's room. And if I'm understanding this correctly, it seems like I have the same dominant strategy. You got it. <laughs> because the dominant strategy for both of these firms is to is to choose in Mr. Pykel's room. That's where the Nash equilibrium is. But don't be fooled because a Nash equilibrium can also occur when only one firm has a dominant strategy or when neither of them do. But this example just makes the whole thing pretty easy to explain. Those are some great explanations, John. But I just wanted to get one more thing. If you look back at our table, we see that if both Lily and Helena chose Miss Bergman's room, they could actually increase profits. It's important to recognize that this does not make the situation a Nash equilibrium because Lily and Helena have no way of knowing what the other will do. After a while, a little mishap occurs and Helena mysteriously passes away. Helena's death makes Lily the sole firm in the industry, making it a monopoly. Monopolies have market power, meaning they face a downward facing demand curve. They also have the power to price discriminate, meaning they can charge different prices to different people for the same good. This allows them to capture all of the consumer surplus. I will pay top dollar for one of these here widgets. I heard they were only $10, but as a wealthy man in need, I'd pay $15. Well, what do you know? They are $15. I don't really need a widget, but if it's $5, I'll take it. It's $5 now. But there are still so many topics that I don't understand. Let's break it down! I've been wondering about why pollution sucks Then my econ teacher told me something about that She said it's a negative externality I'll show you the graph, just you wait and see Here's MSB Marginal Social Benefit. This is public benefit from the firm's product. Then we have the MPC Marginal Private Cost. This is the cost for a household or a person. Econ. Econ. Suddenly unemployment's high. Yup. Yeah. But inflation is so low. Wait, what? As we see here at this point. Where? We're still on the Phillips curve. If we bring employment up, yeah. then inflation's gonna rise. But wait. Policies. Different policies can help us react to different situations and fix the economy. Fiscal. Expansionary fiscal that lets us slower taxes and increase government spending. You say contractionary, I tell you the contrary. Rise in taxes and decrease in government spending. Monetary changes the money supply. Expansionary losers reserve rate and discount rate. And buys government bonds. Contractionary does the opposite. Raises reserve rate and discount rate. And sells government bond. Econ. Econ. We'll do AD and AS. Next. AD reference total demand. A. For final goods and services. AS is the total supply. Total supply. 
of goods made by different firms at different prices. Short run aggregate supply is when wages and resource prices stay sticky because as prices increase, producers produce more. Yeah. <laughs> Long run. Aggregate supply doesn't change when prices go up because higher prices don't raise output. Quantity demand changes with the change in price. This is measured by price elasticity. Elastic demand means demand changes quick with price. Any elastic demand means demand changes slow with price. Price ceilings and floors are government interventions. Price ceilings are max prices for goods and services. This increases QD, causing shortages. Price floors are min prices and they cause surplus. Econ. Comparative advantage, yeah. Countries produce the good, okay. Whoever has lowest OC, ay, uh, yeah. Ought to produce the good, yeah, yeah. yeah. This will maximize consumption. Yo, yeah, wait. To specialize in trade. And still. Absolute. It's absolute advantage. We can produce and produce and produce and produce and produce one good. <laughs>